Hi there, in the following video I'm going to show you uh, how to work out the travelling salesperson problem. The real life problem is as follows. There's a salesman and he's starting off in his office. He wants to visit each of his stores and return to his office. So he wants to uh, visit store 1, store 2 and store 3 and return to his office as via that example. There are many different ways to do it in this case here. He could alternatively go to store 2 first, then store 1, then store 3, and then to the office, etc. Now, uh, there are two formulations of this problem, actually, just to make it clear. The classical travelling salesperson problem, okay, so there's a classical problem. Um, there is a restriction on this. The salesman can only visit each store once and only once be before returning to his office. So he can't visit any store twice. Um, the less strict approach, the more general travelling salesperson problem, um, is one where he could go and visit a store twice, um, but as long as he returns to where he started. So this could be an example of the non-classical one. He's visiting store one, he goes to store two and store three, but he goes back to store one and then back to his office. So that's the non-classical, whereas the classical can only visit each store once. Okay, let's convert this to a network problem. Um, the salesman has his office here. He starts off in his office. He can either go to store one, store two, or store three from there. So he can go to store one here, he can go to store two here, or he can go to store three here. So there's a connection between the office and store one. Um, there's a connection between store one and store two, between store one and store three, between store three and store two, between store three and uh, the office, and finally connection between the office and store one. So there is the associated graph uh, with this real life problem. And converting it into uh, network problem uh, language, the problem here is to visit each node once and return to where you started. Um, and we're interested in doing this in the least possible weight. OK, um, there's another way of phrasing this problem. A Hamiltonian cycle is a cycle or a, or a path that begins and ends at the same place and visits every node in the graph once. So you could say uh, the network problem is to find the Hamiltonian cycle of least weight. Just before I move on and actually uh, go through this problem, just wanted to compare the Chinese postman and the travelling salesperson, just so you can see the difference. The Chinese postman wanted to walk down each street to deliver the mail, um, whereas the travelling salesperson wants to visit each store. Um, the difference is that the Chinese postman uh, has to uh, go via every arc, has to complete every arc in the network, whereas the travelling salesperson only wants to visit every node in the network. So the, they are similar in that they must start and finish in the same places, uh, however the postman must cover all arcs, that's his focus, and the salesperson must cover all nodes, that's their focus. OK, let me show you uh, a network problem there. Here's a very similar network problem with assigned weights. The problem is, uh, let's say the salesman starts at A, I want to start at A, come back to A, and make sure I've visited uh, B, C and D once and only once along that way. Uh, let's just have a go by trial and error to just see what the possible Hamiltonian cycles there could be. Now, the first thing I could do, I could go from A to B, okay, and from that point B to C, uh, C to D. I don't want to go up this uh, path here because I don't want to revisit B, so there I'd have to go up along here to A. And so my path in this example would have been A to B to C to D to A, and it would have been of weight 2 plus uh, 4 is 6, uh, plus 6 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Okay, let's have a go at finding another one. Um, well, I could go from A to C, okay, and then I could go from C to B, then I could go B to D, and D to A. So I could have gone via the route A to C to B to D um, to A, 
which is of weight 4, at 4 is 8, at 4 is 12, at 5 is 17. Also, could I have done anything else? Well, let's have a go. I could have gone from A to C, let's say. Instead of going to B, I could have at this point gone across to D. Then I can't go back to A yet because I haven't visited B, so I have to go to B and then finish off at A. And this route here would have been um, the route A, C, D, B and A. And it would have been of length 4 at 6 is 10, at 4 is 14, at 2 is 16. Now it actually turns out that they are the only three Hamiltonian cycles that exist for this four node network problem. Because anything else I do, you know, it's just going to be a reiteration of these. For example, if I went, um, if I said I went A to D, and then I went B, uh, D to B, uh, B to C, and C to A, well, that's just a rehash of uh, this one here. Um, a, C, B, D, uh, and D, A. So it's just very similar to that one. So you'll find that um, because I have explored all possibilities in this case for a Hamiltonian cycle, the one of least weight in this case turns out to be 16, the root A, C, D, B, and A. Now, that seemed fairly straightforward, and it was. And it was because there were four nodes. When there are four nodes, there are three ways to create a cycle. So you can draw the three potential cycles and you can compare them and see the one of least weight. The problem uh, with the traveling salesperson, as the number of nodes increases, the number of ways of creating cycles increases dramatically. So you can't just list out Hamiltonian cycles and compare them. So you've got to find um, different ways of finding an approach to the problem. Now what I'm going to show you in the following is a way of finding um, estimates for an answer. So uh, I will show you how to find uh, an upper bound for this problem. Uh, an answer that isn't a particularly good answer but one you should be able to improve on but just so you know um, you shouldn't get a weight bigger than this particular answer. I'll show you how to find a lower bound, how to find an answer that uh, is the lowest it could possibly be and most answers would be ab uh, above this. And I will also show you ways to find via what's called the nearest neighbor algorithm a decent stab at a Hamiltonian cycle which hopefully is in between the upper and the lower bound. And finally I will show you ways to, with whatever um, guess you've got to have an attempt at improving that guess and getting it closer to the lower bound. So I'm going to do this via the example I've just done because we know the answer to that is 16 and then I'm going to have a go with a more complicated example afterwards. So here we go. Let's start off by having a go at finding decent solutions. Here was my problem again, just rephrase, finding a Hamiltonian cycle uh, beginning and ending at A of least possible weight. And the first thing I'm going to try and find is what's called an upper bound. An upper bound is going to be an attempt at an answer um, that I should always be able to beat fairly straightforwardly. Now, uh, the way this particular upper bound works, it works as follows. It says, uh, imagine that I can made sure that all the nodes were connected. They have to all be connected for it to be a cycle. So let me connect those minimally to start with. So I can use prims or cross to find uh, a minimum spanning tree. That is something that connects all the nodes and is of least weight. So let's use cross Remember what cross said. Cross said, find um, the arc of least weight, and there it is. He then said, look around, find the arc of least weight as long as it doesn't create a cycle. So this 4 or this 4 or this 4 is of least weight and none of them create a cycle. So why don't I just go for that one? And then you look around, what else uh, could I use? Well, I can't use that 4 because it would create a cycle. But this 4 here is of least weight and it does not create a cycle. And I'm done because I've connected A, B, D and C and it's of least weight. So Kruskal, uh, 
here would tell me that the minimum spanning tree had weight 2 plus 4 plus uh, 4, which is equal to 10. Now, clearly, this isn't a cycle yet, because although A is here, once I go down to C, I'm stuck. There's no way back from C using only this minimum spanning tree. So what the upper bound says is, you know what, if I uh, retrace my steps on each path of the minimum spanning tree, or created a multi-arc between each of them, so I'm going to recreate AC twice, I'm going to recreate AB twice, and I'm going to recreate DB twice, let's say like that, that means now I certainly have a cycle, and the cycle could be AC, and then I would have to go back, let's say to A, by here, then I would go down to B, then I would go along to D, and then I would go back to B, and then I would finish off back at A where I started. And that would have weight two times my spanning tree, because I've doubled everything, so it would be two times my spanning tree of 20. Now, a couple of things to notice here. This upper bound is not even a Hamiltonian cycle, because I've visited, for example, the node B um, several times. I've visited it uh, twice. I've visited A um, three times. So I'm revisiting nodes here, so it's not even a Hamiltonian cycle. So I know uh, th w this is an upper bound because every node's been visited once. Every, in fact, uh, every uh, arc has been gone down twice. So just by cutting out a node once, I should be able to improve on this. So 20, I should, ne I should easily be able to get an answer less than 20 by cutting out one of the arcs, let's say. And surely I should be able to have a cycle less than this upper bound. So, just to reiterate how to find an upper bound, find a minimum spanning tree, either using, using Prim's or Kruskal's algorithm, and double it. Um, that will guarantee you've got a cycle, not a Hamiltonian, but a cycle, and it is of um, most it should ever be. So in the problem now, going back to the original problem here, I've got an upper bound of 20. Okay, now let's move on. I have another algorithm that has a stab at creating another upper bound for me. It sometimes gives a decent ha uh, attempt at a Hamiltonian cycle. So other times, to be honest, it doesn't always get a Hamiltonian cycle for you. But let's see what it does here. It's called the nearest neighbor algorithm, and it says, um, choose any starting node, or in particular, if you're told to start from somewhere, start from that point. So we've said before, we're starting from A. It says, consider all arcs coming out from the one you've just chosen. You've just chosen a 5's coming out, a 2's coming out, and a 4's coming out. It says choose the one of least weight and include that arc and the new node in your cycle. So now, actually let me use a different pen here. I'm including a, b in this cycle. Then it says, uh, repeat step two until you've chosen all the nodes. So it says, from the one you've just chosen B, look at what's coming from it, a four and a four, and choose the one of least weight. There are two fours, so choose any. In particular, let's choose that one there. From C, look at all the arcs coming out from it, a four and a six, and choose the one uh, of least weight as long as it doesn't go back to a, a, a node you've previously already gone to. So I can't choose this or else I'll go back to A. So I must here choose D. And at that point here, uh, I've already gone to B, so I don't want to go down this route. I'll just finish back at A. And that way I've got myself a cycle. And let's have a go at what cycle we've got. We've got the cycle A, B, C, D, and back to A, and it's got weight 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 5, so it's got weight equal to 17. And there is uh, what our nearest neighbour algorithm gives us at an attempt uh, at a solution. Now, uh, that's quite good given what we previously know about this problem. We know that 
Um, 16 was the best answer. So I'm just going to go back here to my original problem and say that the nearest neighbour gave us 17 as an answer. Okay, so we've beaten our upper bound, which we should hope to, so that's good. Now, the upper bound was a way of finding a stab at an answer, um, which was not a particularly good answer. The nearest neighbour was a way of attempting a better answer. Doesn't always give us an answer, uh, but sometimes does, and in this case it did. It would also be useful if I could know the lowest possible answer uh, that uh, for this particular problem because that way if I've got an, a particular answer that I'm working with if it's quite close to this lower answer I may as well I might just stop at that point given that I don't want to check all the possibilities so there's an algorithm for this and it's called the lowest bound algorithm in principle this is how it works and then I'll actually go through it if I had to start from A it says you know what at some point I've got to leave A and at some point I've got to come back to A if it's got to be a Hamiltonian cycle. So why don't I pick the leaving and returning nodes to be the ones of smallest weight? So in this case, I've got 5, 2 and 4 leaving or returning to A. So I'm going to choose the two smallest ones, the 2 and the 4. And they're going to be in my cycle definitely. I've, I've fixed them. Then what it says is, you know what? This isn't necessarily going to be an answer, but it's a potential answer. If I just ensured at this point that B, C and D were connected, then that connection might be enough to have created a Hamiltonian cycle. They certainly have to be connected now in order to be able to visit B, D and C. So if I connect them as minimally as I possibly can, then... Uh, maybe that will create a Hamiltonian cycle. And how I connect B, C and D, I just find a minimum spanning tree between B, C and D at this point. So um, what I would do is I would just, uh, I would look at B, C and D, um, I'd have to connect them, try and connect them together minimally, oh, let's use Kruskal. Kruskal says look at the available arcs, choose the smallest, uh, the four's the smallest, look at the available arcs, uh, choose the smallest as long as you're not creating a cycle and that would have to be um, here. Now D, B and C are fully connected um, so what we'd have here is we'd have the, the two smallest arcs of weight 6 and you'd have a spanning tree here of 8 so you could add them together and your lower bound could in fact be um, 14. So you could, in fact, uh, create a 14 at that point. Now, is this an, even an answer? Well, no, it isn't. Because, look, if I left via this one and then I had to go over to D, I'm stuck there. I have no returning path uh, in order to get to the C and back to A. So it's not even a Hamiltonian cycle. But it is uh, the lowest possible answer that any Hamiltonian cycle could be. OK, I have already kind of shown you how to do this, but let me just do it via the algorithm so you know how to use the algorithm. To find a lower bound, what you do is you choose any starting node, or if told to, start, uh, start where it tells you. I'm going to tell you we want to start at A. It says work out the two smallest weights of arcs uh, from the starting node. Well, 5, 2 and 4 come from there, so the 2 and the 4 are the two smallest ones. So step one, I've got myself the two and the four, and that's got a weight equal to six. Okay, from there it says consider the network obtained, ignoring x, ignoring the starting node, so I'm going to ignore this, and all arcs connected to x, I'm going to ignore this arc, it's connected to a, I'm going to ignore this arc, it's connected to a, I'm going to ignore this arc, it's connected to a. I'm going to find the total weight of the minimum connector for the remaining network. So I'm going to connect D, B uh, and C minimally. Um, so what I'm going to do, again, like I said, use uh, cross scale. Minimum one is this four. 
and then looking around the other minimum one is that four. So they are certainly connected now and I've done step two. So step two found the minimum weight which is four plus four which is equal to eight. The sum of weights from step one and step two is the lower bound. So the lower bound is equal to six plus eight which is 14. And that's, I've just shown you that, but I just want to show you how to actually work with the algorithm. Now, again, as I said, that's not an answer um, in this particular case, but it, it's, it's something so that you know what the lowest possible could be. So go back to my original slide. The lower bound is equal to uh, 14, I said. Okay, now finally, tour improvement. Now, so far, the best answer I've got is the was the following answer from the nearest neighbour. The nearest neighbour said A B C D A. So it said A B uh, C D and A. That was my best answer so far. Let's remember what all the things said. The upper bound was 20. The nearest neighbor was this here. 2 would 4 is 6, and 6 is 12, and 5 is 17. And the lower was actually equal to, on the last slide, 14. So what is our best answer today? Our best answer is that 17 because it turned out to be a Hamiltonian cycle and it's between our upper and our lower bound. It's fairly close to our lower, so we've got a decent answer. However, because we had already checked previously um, what the actual answer is for this, and we know the, the best answer was actually 16, we know this answer could be improved upon. There's a tour improvement algorithm that enables you to try and improve a tour or an answer you've got and this is how you do it. I'm going to rub these out here. Um, I'm going to write our best answer today was the best answer. I'm going to say step one was A, B, C, D, and back to A. So the tour improvement algorithm is a, is a way of trying to improve a Hamiltonian cycle that you may have by considering uh, slightly different uh, uh, parts of the route or slightly different alter alterations to the route you currently have. Um, the way it works is as follows. It says, it considers the first four nodes and it says that we have currently have the, the nodes A, B, C, D in that order. So we go from A to B, uh, from B to C and then from C to D. Okay, and then it says uh, well, what would actually happen in instead of uh, going from A to B to C to D, if I skipped out B the first time round and instead went from A directly to C, then up to B, and then down to D? So really what I'd be doing here is I'd be doing these four, but with the middle two swapped. So C, B, and then D. So I've got the same four but I'm swapping the middle two. Would that be an improvement? Well, would that be? A, B is two. B, C is four. C, D is six. So that would give us a total um, length of 12. And then A, C would be four. Uh, B, C would be four. And uh, B, D would be four. So that would give me 12. There will be no improvement gained by swapping um, the order of B and C. So no, no different. So again, A, B, C, D, C, D, A is our best. Now we've looked at the first four. Uh, now I'm going to look at these second four. I'm going to say, look at B, C, D, A. I'm currently B to C to D to A. And I'm going to say, would it be any better if I went B to D then to C to A. So I'm going to have the same four, but I'm going to swap the middle two. I'm going to swap these middle two. Would it be any better if I went B to D to C to A? So 
B to C is 4, C to D is 6, and D to A is 5. And then uh, let's that gives us a total of 15. And B to D would be 4, uh, C to A, sorry, D to C would be 6, and C to A would be 4. So that is actually equal to 14, which is improvement. So swapping the C and the D would be better. So a better solution would therefore be uh, your A, your B, but swapping the C and the D. D next, then C, swapping them, and then finishing at A. And that would give you a total weight of actually one... Uh, one less, there's an improvement of one here, so it'll give you a total weight of 16. And let's have a see if that's actually right. Just Let's just rub this out here. It's saying to me, if I went from A to B, from B to D, from D to C, and back to A, that would be two at four is six, and six is 12 at four is 16, and there is a better um, Hamiltonian cycle, and hence I've improved the tour by doing this method. Okay, just to summarize how to do the tour improvement, you write the list of nodes in order in which they go, consider the first four, and then work out the distance of the path between the first four as you've got them, and then swap the middle two nodes over and consider that distance. If it's better, make the swap. And then consider uh, make the swap. If it's no better, don't make the swap. Then with your swapped um, tool, keep on going as you go all the way through um, the particular nodes. Okay, now I'm going to show you more complicated traveling salesperson problem. I'd like you to pause the video at each point and see and have a go at the very same as we've just done in this easy example. I'll then show you the answers but I'd like you to pause each stage and have a go yourself. So here's the Hamiltonian cycle. Uh, here's the traveling salesperson problem, sorry. And the aim of the game is to find the Hamiltonian cycle starting from A of least weight. I just encourage you to pause the video to start with and just find yourself a few Hamiltonian cycles and their weight just to be familiar what a Hamiltonian cycle is and what uh, what one looks like. This isn't necessarily the answer, but just to get a feel for what some of them may look like. So pause the video, draw it out, and show yourself a few Hamiltonian cycles. Okay, I'll show you a couple of Hamiltonian cycles. These aren't the answer, but just if I'm starting from A, I could have gone up to B, to C, to D, to E, to F, to G, and back to A. There would be a Hamiltonian cycle. Adding up the weights, 170, 230, 135, 200, 90, 110, and 140. So I've visited every node once there. So that would be an example of a Hamiltonian cycle. Let's see if we could do another. Well, I could go A to D, to B, to C, to E, um, to G, to F and then to A. Again, another Hamiltonian cycle. So there are examples of particular Hamiltonian cycles. Okay, now I would like you to have a go at finding an upper bound to this particular problem um, by finding a minimum spanning tree and doubling it. So pause the video now and have a go at that. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, what a minimum spanning tree would have been here. Um, I would use Kruskal. Uh, Kruskal I find is easiest. Look around. Which one's the smallest? Um, well, the smallest I can see around here is an 80. So I'm going to take that 80. Then looking around for the next smallest, there's a 90 here. I'll take that. In fact, there's two 90s. I'll take that one as well because... Um, it's not creating a cycle. Then looking around, what's the smallest? 170, 110, 230, 135, uh, 200, 180, 100. 100 is the next smallest, so I'm going to take that. Okay, what else am I going to take at this point? There's 210, so why don't I take that one? 
Um, and then there's another 110 here, so why don't I take that one? Is that a minimum spanning tree? Well, yes it is. Everything's connected up, so the minimum spanning tree using Kruskal, the minimum spanning tree was equal to, let's say, the 80 plus the 110 plus the 90 plus the 90 uh, plus the 100 plus the 110 plus the 100 plus the 110. Let's add it up together. Um, 90 is 180, add 110 is 290, add the 80 is 370, add the 100 is 470, and add the 110 is 580. So the minimum spanning tree is equal to 580, and an upper bound for this problem is a cycle, would be a cycle doubling up the minimum sp spanning tree, so the upper bound would be twice times 580, which is equal to 1,160. Not a particularly good answer to this problem, but an upper bound nevertheless. Okay, now what I'd like you to do with the same problem is use the nearest neighbor algorithm to attempt to find a Hamiltonian cycle for this particular problem. So, pause the video here, and in 10 seconds, I will show you the solution uh, to this algorithm. Solution to the nearest neighbor um, algorithm. I we were all told to start at A, so then look around all the arcs coming from A, choose the smallest, so I choose that one. Um, from D, look around all the arcs um, coming from D that go to a node that isn't already in um, your cycle. So 110 and 135, choose the smallest is that one. The only one that doesn't go back, I can't take this one because it would go back to A, so I have to take that one. Can't take that one, must take that one. Um, looking around, I can't take the 200, it would go back to D. Can't take the 180, it would go back to A. So I could take the 90 or the 180, choose the smallest, the 90. And from that point here, uh, I can't go back to A yet, so I can only choose the 110. And then to go back to A, I would have to take that 140. So the nearest neighbor, what does it give me? Nearest neighbor gives me 80 plus 110 plus 230 plus 90 plus 90 plus 110 uh, plus 140. Okay, and that gives me, uh, let's add that up, that would be 190, those two, add 230 would be 220, 420, add 90 would be 510, add 90 would be 600, add 110 would be 710, and add 150 would be 850. And that would be the path A, D, B, C, E, F, G, and back to A, equal 850. So the nearest neighbour does give us a Hamiltonian cycle in that case, and it's of weight 850. Okay, now find a lower bound. Can we find a lower bound to this? Use the algorithm above to find a lower bound. I want you to pause the video, and in 10 seconds I'll start up again, uh, and I'll show you my lower bound. Okay, my lower bound is as follows. I would uh, look from A at the two smallest ones coming out of A, and they're the 80 and the 100, so I would choose these as my two uh, points. I would cross everything out that's coming from A, and not worry about these, so that can't be that one either, and I would do a minimum spanning tree, including B, C, D, E, F, and G. So my minimum spanning tree would be, I'd probably use Kruskal, I'd look around at everything available to me, and I'd choose the smallest, which would be this 90. I would choose that smallest, which would be the 90 here. I would then choose the next smallest, which looking around is 110. 
I would choose the next smallest, which looking around is equal to 110. And I would have to make sure that D and C are connected up. Um, so the next smallest round must be that 135. So there we go. So I've created uh, the two smallest uh, arcs coming out of A in step one would be 80 plus the 100, which would be equal to 180. And step two, the minimum spanning tree for the rest would is equal to 110 plus 135 plus 90 plus 90 plus 110. Okay, so adding this up, well, let me just add the 90, 110 to 200. There's another 200 from them too, so that's 400. Add 135, it's 535. So the lower bound gives us 535. It isn't in any way, shape or form a Hamiltonian cycle. Finally, let's gather everything together. Um, the, our problem was to find a, a Hamiltonian cycle of least weight that started and ended at A. Um, we found that our upper bound was 1160. Our nearest neighbour gave us a Hamiltonian cycle, which is a good answer of 850. And our, so our nearest neighbour algorithm gave us the following uh, Hamiltonian cycle. It went AD to B to C to E to F to G and to A. So it went from A to D to B to C to E to F to G and to A. And it gave us a total um, weight of 850. Okay, what I would like you now to do is pause the video and apply the Tor improvement algorithm to this um, Tor or Hamiltonian cycle here to see if we could improve it. Now let me just give you a quick reminder of what that entails. You look at the first four nodes. You work out the distance of the root ADBC and then you swap the middle two and work out the distance of the root ABDC. If by doing a swap, you get an improvement, you make the swap. And then having made the swap, you write your new, new tour down, if, if you need to swap, and compare the next four, and the next four, and the next four, and the final four when you stop. Go through, see what improvements you can make, and make those improvements to see if you can get a better Hamiltonian cycle than the one we've already got. Pause the video, and I'll talk in 10 seconds. Okay, let's have a go. We're going to compare A, D, B, C with A, B, D, C. This is going to be step one. So A, D, B, C is 80 plus 110 plus 230. And that ends up to 420. And A, B, D, C uh, would be A to B directly is this one here, 170, plus B to D is 110, plus D to C is 135. You add those up and you actually get 415. That's an improvement, so you make the swap of D and B. So your new tool would be A, now B, then D, uh, then C then E, F, G, and then A. So, that's what you'd start your second round of the uh, Tor algorithm with, and then you start comparing B, D, C, and E, and etc. You go through, you compare those, you compare B, D, C, and E with B, C, D, and E. You'll notice that no improvement is uh, happens, so there's no need to swap. Then you go to the sec the next stage, the third stage, you compare D, C, E, and F with D, E, C, and F. You'll see there's no improvement, so you won't swap. Then you would do C, E, F, and G and compare that with C, F, E, and G. Again, you would see there's no need to swap, so you wouldn't swap. And lastly, you would do E, F, G, and A, and you'd compare that to E, G, F, and A. 
again you'd see there's no need to swap. So the best Hamiltonian cycle we could get is A, B, D, C, E, F, G and A and it would give us a total weight equal to 5 less than the 850 we started with so that would be equal to 845. Okay, thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful when revising traveling salesperson problem.